Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here, back with another episode around the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro. And it's been crazy, it's already been 30 days since I've had these phones. It does not feel like a month has gone by, but that is the case. And this will be my in-depth look to see if this year's batch of iPhones is worth the upgrade and of course your money, which is the most important thing. We'll start off with a cheaper guy first, which is the 11, and I love the new entry point of $699. Don't get me wrong, that is still not cheap, but in Apple standards for their flagship, I think that's pretty awesome. It comes in a ton of different colors, and I think it's the phone that most people should end up getting. We'll get to that later on though, and we'll talk about the 11 Pro Max, which has been my daily 10, 99 and more specifically I've got the fully max version up here in Canada. This guy is two thousand dollars and for a smartphone that's ugh. I cannot condone that kind of spending for a device if you're eyeing this model go for the cheapest one You do not need that extra storage especially with iCloud in my month's use it honestly doesn't feel too big of an upgrade from last year's 10s max and even before that the iPhone 10 and I say that very honestly because I'm typically an iPhone user and now my 10s Max, which my girlfriend uses, that thing sits on the table and sometimes I grab hers by accident because I can't tell the difference. The same screen to body ratio, the same large bezels and even the notch hasn't gone down at all in the past three years. And I think if Apple wants to consider itself an innovator, it really needs to change how these devices are coming, especially if you're naming this a pro model. For the iPhone 11, completely agree, that can stay the same. You can have the liquid retina display, isn't even close to Quad HD, but if you're paying 1100, say even 2000 bucks like I did for this device, it has to have more. The display, yeah, you can get over a thousand nits of brightness, but when you've had a device with say a 90 hertz refresh rate, we know that the iPad Pro has 120 hertz. So Apple has the tech, they're just waiting to say come out with that in the iPhone 12, maybe even 13. You and I have the best guess on when that will happen. Even the lightning port on the bottom, although in the Pro models we finally get a faster charger, stick USB-C on it. Make it the same as the iPad Pro. I am sure, I'm betting 99.99 repeating that we will see that in a couple years. No doubt about that, but now Apple changes for from say innovation to reiteration. And that kind of leads me nicely into the second part where there are big differences between devices. Of course, that's the cameras. On the 11, you've got the standard wide and ultra wide. And on the 11 Pro, you've got the trifecta, the stove top, whatever you want to call it. To be very honest, 98% of the time, I am not using the telephoto. I rarely zoom in. I'm either sticking to the wide or my favorite, of course, which is the ultra wide. But let me get to the actual performance because this is where we've seen a big update. And if you're into photography, you'll be super stoked. Even though the megapixel count is the exact same, their software has gotten so much better. Dynamic range is beautiful. Pictures just out of camera with no editing look great. Color reproduction and even their new night mode, you still don't have the option to toggle it on or off. It's all automatic, but some of the results I've got, even you guys have been astounded. I've shared them across social. They're kind of mind blowing. And I would say right now, at this very moment, the 11 Pro is the best camera that you can buy. We're still waiting though for the Pixel 4. To be honest, the best feature that I've noticed with this guy over 30 days has actually been the battery. The phone is slightly larger, maybe millimeters than last year, but the phone lasts hours longer than my previous 10s Max. For a device that you now use the most out of anything in your tech arsenal, something that you're on for at least five, six hours a day, that battery life makes that huge difference. But yeah, that's kind of been my thoughts over the last 30 days. I haven't really seen too many performance upgrades over say last year, although the A13 Bionic chip is in both, it technically is better. We're at a point where these speeds are almost nominal. You can't really tell the difference from last year's model. I definitely recommend the iPhone 11 for most people, unless you are a true tech stickler, you can notice the screen resolution between both devices. I don't think the majority of people can. I cannot wait to see a 90 Hertz display and thin out some of the bezels in say the iPhone 12. One can only dream. That will be, I guess, next year's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Still kind of torn on the midnight green, to be honest. It is my daily, may have worn this sweater for this video, but let me know down below which device you end up choosing and which color. I'm always curious. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones or in one of my vlogs. Peace.